Welcome to the Lori and Cher Show, Hacking into Awesome. I'm Lori Williamson. And I'm Cher Jones. And if you don't know, Cher and I are cousins, and we host this weekly Google Plus Hangout where we talk to absolutely amazing people and totally hack in to what makes them awesome. That's right, Lori, and I am super excited for tonight's show, and of course, we always find awesome guests. That's the one thing that everybody says to us. Where do you guys find your guests? So tonight, we will not disappoint you once again, and um, before we get into it, I just want to say, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, and you haven't subscribed yet to the awesomeness of our guests, make sure you hit subscribe, and of course, leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. If you want to talk about the show, we will talk back, so don't worry, and of course, if you are on Facebook, hit us up. Facebook.com slash Lori and Share. Show the love with a like. And of course, we are always sharing awesome things that our guests are, our past guests are up to. And you'll find out who's on next on Lori and Share. Absolutely. Share Jones, I have to tell you, I feel kind of foolish to be bringing this up right now. But um, it is so hot outside. Oh my gosh. I'm in my place. Yeah. I, I, I'm dying. Like, I'm melting. Okay. My hair was all big and now. Not so much. That's how I feel. Like, you don't know, before when we were in the green room, I actually had to change. I mean, I don't know that a lot of people know that what's like what I actually wear below because it would be it'd be quite funny if we actually revealed that. What I'm wearing right now are like the shortest of shorts because I'm that hot. <laughs> Lori wears short shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Lori wears easy pants, okay? That's what Lori wears when she's at home. So, I mean, you know, up here, it's what is what's the saying? The... Party. Business on the top, party on the bottom. So Lori's partying it out. Partying it down below. So, um, yes. But I'm very grateful that we are finally having some spring like temperatures in Toronto. And I'm hoping that everyone around um, who's watching is, is experiencing those type of temperatures as well. Because I think we had a really, really hard winter. Oh, man, it was hard, like really, really hard. So I am grateful for whatever, even if I'm sweating, even if I look, you know, exhausted and tired, that's okay because no, summer I, is coming. Exactly. Okay. Well, hopefully my air conditioning will finally kick in and, like, cool this place down. Um, but I wanted to kick things off because, I mean, Cher, it's episode 19 of our show. I can't believe it. We started it at the beginning of the year, and it's, like, crazy that we're about to buck up on June, six months into the year. It's kind of nuts. So It's uh, awesome. It is awesome, right? Um, tonight we're talking about women kicking butt in a male-dominated world of sports. Um, we're honored to welcome the first Canadian agent of the WNBA, and she's an agent of the NBA, Lisa Washington, to the Lori and Cher Show. How's it going, Miss Lisa? It's going great. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on your show. Absolutely. Well, we're going to join. We're going to have you join us for our segment, uh, which is kicking off our show, which is our Hot Topic segment. Um, but I also wanted to introduce um, our other Hot Topic panelists. Um, she's coming from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Good old Canadian girl, Josephine Mensa. How's it going, lady? Really, really well. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So Josephine is a lifestyle blogger. She's a young professional. She's also a beauty queen, ladies and gentlemen, a beauty queen. Uh, this lady has a lot of things going on for her, so we're excited to have her on the panel. Cher, why don't you kick things off and uh, let's get into... Let's get into the hot topics tonight. Oh, yeah, because you know, our hot topics are always hot because we are combing the internet, trying to find out what everybody's talking about because you know we're talking about it too. So there is no way you could click anywhere with, on the internet without talking about Kanye and Kim's wedding. And today the dress was revealed. And um, oh my gosh, I am in love with the dress. And you're looking at Kim Ye and then they... Her, her, is it a Givenchy dress in lace? Um, yeah. What do you guys think? Are you loving her dress, or did you love the other one with that other guy? What's his name again? <laughs> um, <laughs> Chris Humphreys. Oh, yes, that's his <laughs> that's name. Right. Yeah, that other guy. So, Lisa, your thoughts. Yes. Were you loving the dress? I love the dress. I love the dress. It's class. It's a classic piece. Um, Kanye's going to put his... his you know, wife to be in, in something beautiful. He's got uh, great taste, and I absolutely adore it. I think they look great together. 
Were you surprised at how classy she looked? I mean, like, no breasts, no, nothing hanging out, just straight up, here we go, Kim walking down, beautiful lace, just beautiful. No, I wasn't surprised at all because if you noticed how she was dressing since she started dating Kanye, uh, it, it, it was, it's more of a classy, elegant, sophisticated look uh, mm -hmm. with, his, with his designer and his uh, stylist. So um, I wasn't surprised at all. I love it. I love the new Kim. Um, I, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. So <laughs> I love it. Josephine, what were your thoughts? I thought it was really elegant as well, comparing it to her previous dress from the first marriage. Again, a very nice and classic piece. I really like the veil. I thought that was really interesting. You know, oh, yeah. we having, kind of, of falling behind her like that, I thought it was really, really elegant. And it really shows off her curves. So I think it's a win-win. Agreed. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Lori, your thoughts? I know you were loving the veil. <laughs> I was loving the veil when they posted on people.com yesterday the first sneak peek and we only saw the side and I know Radar the day before had the back shot. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, I love the veil. I agree. I was actually surprised because I posted it on our Facebook page and we got like bar barely anyone commented. So my question was like, does anyone even care? I think there's like so much hateration that's going on for Kimye and this wedding and probably yeah. all the money that they spent that I don't think it's like as groundbreaking or anyone really cares as much as I thought they would. It's true because you kind of expect them to like overspend and just be so in your face ridiculous. Like I mean, it, it's not Kanye's way to do anything else. And I don't know if you guys caught um, the newspaper clipping from New York Post and the, like their headline or not their headline, but right in the body uh, of the little clipping was two jackasses get married. And <laughs> yeah, I did see that actually. Yeah. So I was. Yeah, and I mean, so yeah, I think, Lori, you, you're on to something, like, as far as, like, just, the, people got the hate on for them, but you know what, they look happy. Yeah. They look yeah. happy. Anytime, so. anytime you get to, you know, marry the man you love, or you marry the woman you love, I think that's a good thing, so just wishing them nothing but positivity and light, because I think that love in the public eye must be ten times worse than love, just regular love, which is difficult in itself. Right, ladies? Agreed. I would say so. Yeah. yeah. And also, there might be a difference between like their private selves and their public selves, right? So that's also something to consider too. <laughs> no, I totally agree with that. And um, speaking of love in the public eye, we saw a couple <laughs> weeks ago we were talking about what was going on in. Um, the L.A. Clipperland and the Sterling household and all their business up on the streets because of um, um, V. Viviano or and Steviano and now they're Shelly has control of the team and she's going she wants to make a deal so there's a lot of people in the runnings right now so there's the former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer he's the main guy that they're talking about but also people like Grant Hill are resurfacing Magic Johnson um, a Japanese multi-millionaire multi-billionaire sorry you couldn't be a billionaire you couldn't be a millionaire and buy this team you gotta be a billionaire oh, and yeah. um, a few others and also oh apparently has dropped out of the runnings um, you guys have around 1.7 million dollars for this team, anyone? Anyone? Wow. I wish I did. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, this is this is right up your alley, Lisa. As as an agent in the NBA, <laughs> you know the kind of bucks that these people make. So you know what the players make. We can only imagine what the owners are making. So what are your thoughts on this? Like, is is it about time? Are you glad to see this happen so quickly? Yeah, it's about time. Um, you know, he's been a, a menace for a minute. Uh, he's uh, always had racial slurs, said racial slurs. Um, you know, he, you know, he, he kind of deserves what's happening right now. So absolutely, um, let the best person who wants the team win. Uh, who, who would you want to win? I mean, Grant Hill, Magic Johnson, uh, David Geffen. Um, who would you like to see it ends up with? I'm, I didn't even know that Grant Hill was rolling with that much money. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure he's got investors on the side that, that will back him. Um, you know what? I, I love Magic Johnson. Um, he's, he's a great business person. He makes great decisions. 
um, and and his work with investing into Starbucks have shown and, and proved that you know he's good with his money and and his business acumen. So um, it would be nice to see him get the team. He just got the the LA um, Sparks team on the WNBA side. So um, yeah, I I'd probably go for Magic. And I love the irony about it as well. What about you, Josephine? Your thoughts on that? I'm not so much into sports, so there's not much I can say on this topic, to be perfectly honest with you. But I, definitely, uh, when the whole scandal and everything was going on, people were really worried about, you know, how will that just jeopardize the team and stuff like that. So I think anyone else would be better than the people who are running it right now, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, exactly. Let the best man or woman win. Because yes, I love woman. it. You know, women's still selling it, so that's awesome regardless of the circumstances. Okay. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I would just love the irony of having Magic pick up that team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lori, what about you? Um, yeah, no. As I said, I'm surprised that Grant Hills has, even, has this type of money, the Grant Hill group. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm like, wow, who knew um, that people are rolling that deep in the, um, you know, former players. Yeah. So, um, yeah, to the best man wins, I think, um, as long as, I mean, the Sterlings have had a really good role, uh, go at it, and, I mean, they are at the latter part of their lives, so they can take a break. They can yeah. take, it, take a break. They can go as visitors, and they don't have to worry about running the actual team. So, yeah. Speaking of taking a break, oh Canada, can you please take on Turks and Caicos? I would love to call that home, my home away from home. I don't know if you guys have heard about this. Um, the premier of Turks and Caicos was here in Canada talking about, you know, us having a, a formalized agreement where they actually become part of our country the same way Hawaii is part of the states. We need a Hawaii in our lives. But I know um, our finance minister is saying, it, basically he's, without saying not over my dead body, he's basically saying, no, it's not going to happen, not in this lifetime. But come on, give us some sunshine. I know we're getting it here, but what do you guys think? Can this work out for you, Josephine? You, what do you think of this? Do you want some Turks and Caicos Canada in your life? I definitely think it can work out for me. I do come from Saskatchewan, so <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course I'm going to say yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> absolutely. I think it would be a nice little getaway. Um, a lot of Canadians do go to the Caribbean anyway um, to vacation. Definitely Mexico is also a popular destination, so it wouldn't be a bad idea. And, oh, absolutely. And do you think it's... I mean, I'm looking at this, Lisa, and I mean, yeah. would you like to take your, your, your kids there, go there for a week, and, and then spend, bring your Canadian money and know it's all good? <laughs> well, well, that's just it. Knowing it's all good, um, Turks and Caicos is beautiful, so absolutely, we need it. And, um, you know, speaking of finance minister, if, I, if you know, may Jim Flaherty rest in peace, he, he was my boss. So um, if he was alive, I know that he would be all for it because um, he loves to travel. So um, I know. It, it, the right decision. So, um, yeah, Turks and Caicos, I'm all for it. All for it. Lori, uh, let's go. Absolutely. You know I love to travel. I've never been to Tur Turks and Caicos before, so I don't really know what this means in terms of, like, us having it as, like, the 11th province. Like, does it mean, like, flights are cheaper, hotel? Like, I don't, like, do we get, like, um, like, you know, the Turks and Caicos rate if we're trying to book a hotel. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, I'm looking to see, like, how can I get there easier and cheaper? So, yes, yeah. let it happen. Because uh, I think we need something after this winter. Like, whoo! Uh, I'll take whatever I can get, okay? Seriously, I will take whatever I can get. And it's funny, I was hanging out at Lori's house just last week, and we were watching some people. So I, I can't remember which HDTV show, because Lori watches them. And it, was, like, um, it was... Um, House Hunters, and they were in, um, it was like the Caribbean edition. Oh, yeah. no, it was, oh, wow. it was, it was, in, it was in House Hunters. It was Caribbean life, and they were going to Turks and Caicos to buy a home. And I was Ooh. like, I could live there. I could live there. So I was like, yeah, no, that looks pretty good. Um, we've got one more hot topic of the night, and she's always been a hot topic in our eyes. Like, we've seen her decline. We've seen her being amazing. This is Whitney Houston. And basically, her family is saying that she deserves more than a TV movie. Right now, we have Angela Bassett will be directing the film on her love story between Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston. And her family's not happy about that at all. 
And they're like, no, listen, they're even considering a lawsuit. And they're like, no, she deserves more. And they want to do something similar to the This Is It with um, Michael Jackson and his legacy. But does Whitney's does Whitney need more than a made-for-TV movie of the week? Is it good enough for her or not? I think it's more for the fans, probably. Um I don't know. Like, I understand why the family is a little bit hesitant because maybe they're scared about how everyone will frame it, you mm -hmm. know, and will it put Whitney in a good light or, you know, that kind of stuff. Is it more bad PR? I think it would be nice to see it. Uh, I always like Lifetime movies. <laughs> I'm just kind of like that kind of person. <laughs> so I, I, think be, I think it would be really nice. Lisa, what about you? Do you want to see her on the big screen or just want to see her on your couch, you know, eating some popcorn, watching her in a movie of the week? Um, you know, if they're going to do classic songs and a little bit of, about when um, Bobby was younger, yeah. um, not not so much when she started the drugs, not so much when she started to... But you know that's what the movie's going to be about. <laughs> then, yeah, I don't want to see it. So, absolutely not. Yeah. That, it, it's unfortunate. I mean, Lori, you, I mean, you worked in the entertainment world for so long. What do you expect from this movie? I mean, I'm still waiting for an Aaliyah movie, so... Oh, uh, that would be nice. Yeah, that yes. would be good. So, I, I'm waiting for the Aaliyah movie. I think there's a lot that we don't know about Aaliyah. I remember watching the Bobby and Whitney. Um, I lived in New York at this time, and it was, um, I think it was on Bravo. I think that's where... Uh, Bravo or VH1? Uh, Bravo, I think. Um, and it was the Whitney-Bobby reality show, and that was a hot mess. My cousin and I, Jeanette... We would like literally PBR that and watch it like over and over again just because it was a hot mess. So, I mean, do I feel that she deserves um, more than that? I mean, if they can make it into a really great story, maybe it's just a little bit too soon to make it into a big, huge, um, uh, like, motion picture. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't think that it's going to take away from her if they have it on Lifetime. I still think that the opportunities to make it into motion pictures later on and having some young starlet play her is something that's totally possible. Um, kind of like dream girls or something along those lines. I was just thinking that. That would be perfect. And I mean, instead of the family going against this and, 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 and they could kind of champion around it and be strategic about that so they, they can say, well, you know, we'll help you guys write it. Yeah. Or, you know, just so they can get in there and kind of have some sort of control. Or at I, least think they like money. I think they're all about the money. Um, yeah. That sister-in-law, the brother, um, uh, yeah, they're about the money. Do you, <laughs> what do you think? Do you think she deserves anything more, Cher? Uh, no. I, I, I mean, that's Whitney's money, and the most I would say is give it to Bobby Christina. Like, if the, there is proceeds, not to the rest of the family. And, and um, I guess Bobby, too. He was still her husband. So the law is the law. But outside of that, I mean, family needs to go to work if, if the cash is low. That's all I have to say. Or just maybe be more careful with their spending? <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. But once you're used to that lifestyle, it's very hard to change. But, yeah. you know. You know, this is about the dollars. I don't know that this is about, you know, keeping Whitney's memory alive. Well, in my opinion, at least. Yeah. Well, that's it for our Hot Topics, Lori Williamson. It is. Josephine, uh, we want to say thank you so much. I know the camera wasn't working, but we want to say thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Um, and you're actually heading to Toronto. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm headed your way. Um, so with the Black Canadian Awards, uh, that is an annual uh, kind of ceremony that's done here in Toronto. Um, the Black Canadian Queen Beauty Pageant is almost like a segment of that. So Black Canadian Awards celebrates all different types of things. It could be best entertainer, best blogger. Maybe you guys might be nominated next year as a best podcast or you know something like that. That could be really interesting. That'd be really hey, cool. Hey guys, I'm just saying, she's got a great idea. <laughs> just saying. I'm planting the seed now, right now. I love it. <laughs> so um, this is almost like a segment of the whole entire award show. So if your viewers are going to be in the Toronto area, um, they can easily get tickets on the blackcanadians.com website. Uh, the event is on June 7th, and this falls on a Friday. And also for uh, nominees and honorees, there is a pre-event on the 6th. So I'll be headed to Toronto probably just the day before on the 5th. 
just to kind of get things sorted out and sort of check out a little bit of the city. I always come to Toronto but just stay in the airport really. I'm always transitioning to another place. So this will be my first time actually out in the city. Wow. Well, yeah. well you should have a good time. Absolutely. I'm really, really I've, excited. I've been to Saskatoon once for the Juno Awards. Oh, and good. I remember that you guys have these something and other berries covered in chocolate, right? The Saskatoon berry covered in chocolate? Uh, that, could be, that could be a that's possible for dessert. tourists, Lori. That's for the tourists. <laughs> but actually, a lot of people, a lot of people do eat Saskatoon berries. It's just like a very dark um, berry. And um, no, there's pies. There's I've seen even like soap made of it because it's high in antioxidants. There are jams, everything. So yeah, that definitely is a popular a popular thing to try when you come to Saskatoon. Perfect. Well, I just wanted to congratulate you as well. You had a, um, a GoFundMe to get the money to actually come to Toronto for this yeah. trip. And you made your goal. Woo -hoo! So congratulations. We really appreciate you coming on the show today. And um, look forward to, to seeing you in Toronto. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Bye, Thanks. Take care. All right. So let's get into the things here. Um, our next guest, uh, our main guest for tonight, uh, she's a trailblazing entrepreneur. She's a philanthropist. Lisa Washington has turned her love and knowledge, her passion for sport into a career. She's now a pioneer in the Canadian basketball industry. And you know what? The way this woman is passionate and like how she's so giving, we know that she's going to make a mark. So Lisa, we are so excited to talk about you. Oh man, thank you so much again for having me. I'm excited. I was a little bit nervous uh, about being on the show because you guys definitely hacking in, hacking in, and um, I love it. So I love the name. I'm happy to be here, and um, yeah, thank you again. Well, we love that you're a good old Canadian gal that we're talking to tonight, and that you've been able to get accomplish so much in your in your life. Um, mm -hmm. We really wanted to just kind of start off and tell us. Take us back to the beginning, what it was like growing up um, and your relationship with sport. Sure. Um, I, I grew up in Swansea Mews. It was a Toronto Community Housing uh, Project Corporation. Uh, it, it's just uh, at Runnymede and um, the Queen's Way. So it's not too far from Sunnyside or Hyde Park. Um, growing up there, I loved track and field. I love to run, run, you know, I outran all of the guys in the neighborhood. We play hide go seek. I would win to the tree, you know, I'd get there first. So um, the love for running um, started at a very young age and I ran in public school and um, I, I was, un, you know, nobody could beat me. I was undefeated. So in 100 meter and I was the anchor runner for relay and I loved it. So, um, and I carried on to grade nine at Running Me Collegiate and I stopped there. Because uh, something about boys got in the way. So oh, those damn boys, I tell you. <laughs> so um, yeah, it, it started there, and um, I stopped in grade nine. But I, I still, you know, had the love for running. And then, you know, at nineteen, just uh, you know, I turned twenty, and two days later, I had my daughter Dakota at twenty years old. So. Um, I knew when she was born, I would continue that that legacy of sports. Um, and her stepdad uh, actually said, you know, as she grew, her arms were very long. So it was either tennis or basketball. And she said, you know, Mom, I, I want to play basketball. So it, then it started all over again. And then my son came along, Cameron. And, um, you know, because Dakota was playing basketball, you know, he, he actually wanted soccer. He wanted football. He wanted it all. But um, we narrowed it down for him, and, and it was basketball. Yeah, so. so they came from some good stock there. <laughs> Both yeah. of them are awesome athletes. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, you know what? It's, it started there, and um, it continued. It continued from there on. So tell us, career-wise, when you as you started to um, move in and you're realizing, like, how did... Okay, so that was your kids. We got a lot of background information about you, but tell us how you made your career choices and explain a little bit about how that was going and, and what, what led you to the path that you're at today. Good question. Um, to be honest with you, being here right now, um, 
uh, in all that I do, I didn't see it coming. I was a mother first uh, for, for about 10 years till I was about 30. It was basketball games and tryouts and um, slapping them here and there. I also worked for the Starlight Children's Foundation and Sick Kids Hospital alongside Sick Kids where I did an outpatient program. So I did a lot of traveling. Uh, but because my kids were small, um, I enjoyed it and they enjoyed it. So um, for me, working at Starlight and being a manager, managing uh, offices in, in Calgary, Ottawa, as well as Vancouver, and, and being there quite often throughout the year. So, um, And then one day I woke up, and um, I woke up and I said, you know, I don't know if I'm happy. I don't know if I'm happy uh, being with anybody right now and sort of trying to figure out Lisa. And um, because my kids were grown, uh, I decided to you know, pursue another career. And um, I, I took a contract at Wild Water Kingdom for six months because the owners there, they actually own Wild Water Kingdom, but they also own a big mall in Sault Ste. Marie. So I did some research there for them and um, just, just for six months. And then I took a year off and I stayed home. And I just sort of reintroduced Lisa to Lisa again uh, because at this time, you know, my daughter's a teen, my son's coming up. And I sort of thought about what do I want to do and just seeing the basketball community and all that it offered. And my daughter kept saying to me, you know, Mom, you come from the charity world. You gotta, we got to somehow give back and help other kids that can't afford it. Because she had a great do donor, uh, Dr. Louis Fortes, who donated thousands of dollars to her um, and her career. And, you know, she was able to succeed because of him. So, you know, she, she said it and I did it and Camda Sports came to life. I love that. We're going to talk about Camda Sports, but one of the interesting things that you just shared with us is that you had the year off. What was getting to know Lisa? Because I think that that's something that um, a lot of people don't know themselves. Um, they don't maybe have the luxury of being able to be off for, you know, a period of time to really get to what it is that they want to do. What was that experience life and what did you f get out of it? Like, what did you, well, if you were to give tips to anyone that needs to, you know, kind of get into what they want to do, what their life's purpose is, what would you, what would you say to that? Um, take the time. Take the time. Bite the bullet. Um, you know, I, I lived off of savings and um, I went on EI and I sort of just wanted to figure out me and Figuring out me and taking time for Lisa was, you know, painting my fence in the backyard, um, getting landscaping, some landscaping done, and falling in love with my Japanese maple tree and shrubs, and just getting to know a little bit about gardening. And uh, because I grew up so fast, I had my kids at such a young age that, again, being a mother first, I always put them first. Um, anyone who knows me will be able to tell you that I sacrificed for them. So. Um, I was able to travel and um, just just really, you know, figure out some fine wine, eat some great pasta, you know, learn some new recipe. And so, uh, pardon? It sounds like you went to Italy. Yeah, I went to Italy last year. Um, so I, I went to Italy for my 39th birthday, and uh, I went to Paris, Italy, you know, Rome, Venice. Tuscany, Luca, I did a, a full train all over the place and it was fantastic. I travel alone uh, quite often uh, because it's so important for me to, to be present and um, to, to have my thoughts uh, very clear so I'm able to do what I can do. Well, Lisa, what's interesting is, um, funny as you said that, you're talking about Italy, we actually got a, a compliment from our Q&A app. So if you guys are watching and you have questions, you want to ask Lisa something, you want to ask Lori or myself something, let us know. But we got this question, we got this compliment all the way from Italy in Italian. So when you were talking, I'm there going to Babylon to try to translate what this person had said. And um, basically it says, congratulations, you are also beautiful. A greeting from Italy. Ciao. And that's from An uh, Andrea, and I cannot pronounce your last name. So Andrea B, thank you so so much we appreciate the love all the way from Italy and we were talking about your land so it's all good so thank you so much oh, that's awesome and it's beautiful there anybody who hasn't been to Italy um, has to go and, and Florence and Tuscany is just wow but Rome blew me away so thank you from Italy um, I, I'm, I, I was happy to be there so. I can't 
to go myself. I've always, ever since, well, I've wanted to go for such a long time, but I think watching that movie Eat, Pray, Love and watching Julia Roberts eat that pizza, and like, it's just like, I've always wanted to just do that exact same thing um, and just eat the food and drink wine and just be merry with the people and, and all that. So um, I'm glad to know that you had such a great time. Um, during that time, though, I mean, obviously you got to know yourself. You got to know what direction you wanted to go in. I know you alluded it to it before, um, which is CAMDA. Tell us the name and the relevance to you, and then tell us what you're doing now with this organization that you've started. Sure. Um, Canada Sports Foundation Canada will you know, fund kids in sports and education. It came about, Canada is Cameron uh, and Dakota. Uh, so C-A-M and D-A is for Cameron and Dakota, my, my two beautiful children. And um, it's an honor of them. It's their legacy. They'll be able to, to keep this charity alive uh, way after, uh, you know, when I'm gone. And, um, you know, it's here to fund kids who, who need it, uh, sports equipment, registration, uh, for them to play the game that they love. And what's so beautiful about Canada is that um, the family where we can fund the parent or guardian will be able to travel with this child wherever they may go. We hope to do that twice per year. Uh, Canada Sports Foundation uh, became a charitable organization in 2012. So it's a lot of work um, having a charity. For those who don't know, um, you know, you've got to build great relationships with um, donors and sponsors and philanthropic individuals and get out there and you know speak your passion and, and let these people open their po you know open their their checkbooks and donate to you um, for, for your cause because there are so many wonderful causes uh, here in Toronto and there's so many charity thousands so CAMDA um, sets itself apart because we will fund a parent or a guardian with that child where we can. Because uh, what we were finding is, um, you know, a lot of the coaches and managers were taking that role as a parent on, and you know, households were breaking down, and you know, kids were arguing with their parents. You can't afford this. You know, my coach has got me, and my manager's this. So you know, we want to be able to build that family unity again. You know, say to that mom or dad, guess what? You're going this weekend with Johnny or Bobby or, you know, to, to this to this game or you're going to be able to hang out and go to the hotel and all, all expenses paid for. So that's what we're building. Um, a lot of people are, you know, I get emails, all, I get emails daily about, you know, the website. Where's your website? You've been, you know, you've been around for a while. But what they don't understand is uh, I'm very patient. I take my time for greatness. It, I don't rush it. Mm -hmm. So... I'm in the background doing all of the, the deals and collaborating with partners and, um, you know, read to rap, uh, you know, micro, micro skills where I'll be speaking tomorrow at um, uh, Albion Community uh, High School and um, just getting out in the community and building uh, great uh, partnerships. So, and of course, grant writing and getting the money to do that great website that everybody so wants. So uh, we are funding right now uh, some kids, but I'm funding the kids that were actually waiting uh, so patiently for funding. I've got some hockey players um, that reached out to me last year's summer um, and um, some other partnerships that I um, promised I would support this summer. So, um, you know, going into the fall in September, September, October, we'll be able to accept some new applications and start funding some, some new kids. And I'm in the like Sorry, Laurie. Um, I really like that aspect of, and that's what makes your chair. That, that's what makes Camda Sports so different is the fact that you're bringing the parent into into the funding because that's unheard of. I've never heard of something like that before. And I guess you can identify as an athlete, as a parent, and know how important that is as far as including the parent in the travel and then that divisiveness that could happen having the dual parenting relationships with the coaches and then with the with the parents themselves and I and, and I see what you're doing and I think that is magical and I just wanted to um, you know shout you out on that because I think that is thank awesome thank you so much um, when I you know I always say to God every night when I say my prayers, I thank him for the business mind that he's given me. Some has gotten, you know, to be able to sing around the world, your Beyonce's and, and act and stuff, but he has blessed me with the business mind. So I, what I did was I sat back and really thought about why I want to do this charity and what lives I want to change. And I, not only the child's life, life, but the parent or the guardian mm -hmm. to keep them together. 
So and of course, this obviously hits home for you because, you know, um, with your daughter and the fact that she's received, as you said, she had a sponsor. So it's kind of like you paying it forward, you know, and like you've been in it yourself. Um, Dakota is obviously playing at a, you know, a quite an elite level. Um, <laughs> so I know that you level, are, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you want to be able to go and, and, and see her at her games and stuff like that. So you know firsthand what it means to, I know, I hear a lot of times, you know, people who say that, like, their parents didn't get to show up to the games with them. Uh, that they were playing in and like what that meant to them to have their parents there you know their parents were either working or you know kind of maybe disengaged of what they were doing in school or what they were doing outside of sports so you know by what you're doing you really are creating that bond and it means so much for a child to be able to look into you know the bleachers or you know whatever sport they're in and to be able to see their parents supporting them um, you know, with their, you know, with something like, you know, they're very young to have like a life, like a dream of being, you know, playing at such a good level and to have that support is so necessary. Absolutely. Every child deserves to dream. Um, you know, it's, it's so important that we, you know, people, young, young adults and, and youth come from different backgrounds and, um, different cultures. And it's so important to allow, uh, each and every, um, young child to dream, to dream, and their their dreams are valid. And and the one thing also as well is, I mean, I'm not very familiar with the sports industry. Um, you know, I've done some stuff. I know Cher has done some stuff with sports, um, right. just you know, on a production level. But I know that it doesn't seem like the Canadian system is as um, as developed as it is in the states with the type of sponsorships and the types of opportunities I mean it always seems like there's I hear like you know I know that there was like a um, a documentary they were talking about the corrupt behind the scenes of um, you know athletes going to the states and having like these sponsor families and all that kind of stuff so um, what would you like to see in terms of some things that would change differently in youth sports um, that would just give more opportunity to Canadian kids um, well, you know what, I, I think we've got the opportunity. The opportunity is here with us. Um, I think that what I'd love to see is that, um, first of all, parents get involved. I you know, your voice needs to be heard. Uh, you need to make the decisions for your children uh, and, and the journey that they should, should tackle. Um, so I think development, uh, training versus just playing the games, any game that they love. Um, training and developing that player is key, you know, healthy diet, and if it's limited income, you know, I grew up on limited income, and I had a, had a decent diet, so anything is possible, and just, you know, going back to the very beginning, so development, healthy diet, you know, a great student athlete, um, you know, good grades, because without it, you can't do your SAT or ACT, um, but I think the opportunity is here in Toronto, it's how one tackles it, and it's educating these parents and these youth that, um, you know, it, it's not all that you see on television. You know, I took, I took cable out of my home three years ago, four years ago almost, uh, come June, and um, it's because I love television. I love what it, what it does. I'm not knocking it, but it was, it was giving my children a, a, a sense of false hope and that what, what they see on t TV is what they can achieve, but it doesn't work like that. Um, you really got to start from the bottom and you really got to grind and work hard and have good work ethics. So the opportunity is here in Toronto. It's how each and every athlete tackles it. And, you know, they've got to be really wise and smart. And if they don't know, read. I read every single day. I live on the computer. I read all the time. Educate yourself. Um, that's what I did. What is... Go ahead, Cher. With... Um... With that, you look at the fact that um, you're seeing these kids, you have this advice, and you look at you look at the Canadian system right now, and you look at the fact that they're adding more schools like Bill Carruthers, for example, where you have these sport, they're, they're schools, high schools built for sport, and you see with the Pan Am Games coming to Toronto next summer, and the facilities are starting to happen. So this is, you're, you're right in saying that this is, 
prime time, especially for for Canadian kids and opportunity. And and the pipelines are starting to open, and people are starting to watch. Like you look at how many Canadians are in the NBA draft this year, and how many right. people are, scouts are watching. So that's a, a a good thing. So it's moving in the in the right direction. And you look as far as where your career is going, and, and what you have done as a woman. Um, going as, as far as getting certified as both the first WNBA um, agent in Canada, female NBA, WNBA agent in Canada, and as well, you just recently got your NBA agent certification as well. What led you to, to that process and, and going for that? Because you didn't go a traditional route. Absolutely not. Um, you know what? I've got to, I've got to shout out a, a good friend of mine, Andre. He's the one who actually said it to me when I was in New York. Um, and uh, when he said it to me, I took it, researched it all of last year uh, for about six months, and thought to myself, yeah, I can, I can ac absolutely, um, you know, run alongside all these men. And uh, I, I applied for it in September of 2013. And uh, sorry, I applied for it in the summer, so it was July of 2013, and I received it in September of 2013. So um, it was a great achievement. Uh, I, I did have to write a two two and a half page letter of my accomplishments and my career history um, with um, making deals and negotiating contracts, um, and, and and letting them know that I can do it, and read the appendix and read all of you know the rules and regulations surrounding uh, being an agent. So. I did it and I got it and I, I think I almost fainted at the mailbox <laughs> when, I, when I got it in the mail. So, um, but first they, you know, they send you a congratulation email and I was like, I was reading it the Friday evening saying, is this real? Is this right? Did they get these? Latoya, I emailed her back right away. I was like, are you sure? You know, and she's like, I'm absolutely sure, Lisa. Um, so she said, congratulations again. You know, you are the first Canadian. Uh, female WNBA agent, and, and that's a big deal. And I thought, really? It is a big deal. That's a really big deal. It is huge. It's massive, <laughs> lady. That is very, very huge. What, you know what, but break it down for us, because I think that, like, we only have, like, was it Jerry Maguire? We have an idea of what... An uh, our list, yeah. <laughs> what, what is... Um, uh, an agent, you know, like we hear of agents, you know, for for Hollywood movie stars, you know, think of Entourage, but what is it that you actually do as an agent for the WNBA and the NBA? Good question. Um, so as an agent, you will um, advocate on behalf of the athlete that you, uh, that signs a contract with you. So you'll negotiate uh, endorsement deals, marketing deals, you'll ensure that they get the right amount of money that they're rightfully owed to sign after their, say, two-year or five-year set contract uh, when they're ready to move to a different team or another team wants them. You know, if they want $20 million for him, you want $30 million. If they want, you know, 100000 for her, you want 200000 for her. So, um, you know, it, it's be, being able to be vocal um, and know your work. Um, you know, I am studying and crafting my work right now. I am not interested in athletes um, and signing any athletes. However, I've had one come to me for, for, for June of this year, and I said, you know, if, if you're deciding with, with different agents, you know, go with whoever. I'm still fairly new. I know I, I'll still do a great job, um, and it's not that I don't want you, but, um, you know, uh, I'm happy to take you when your contract is up because by that time I'll, I'll be blazing. So um, you know, it's it's ba being able. You are the next uh, most important person to that athlete athlete beside their, their besides their parents and their you know their family. Um, so um, you're, you're a trusted advisor and you're always looking out. I mean, it's kind of like in the real estate. I sell real estate and like when I'm working with a buyer, I'm looking out for their best interest. I'm trying to get them the deal and all that and, and vice versa when I'm working with the seller. So, I mean, I guess, yes, at the end of the day, you're the trusted source. You're the person that's going to be giving them, you know, that's been in the trenches and, you know, been exposed to everything. So you can really look at everything from a complete 360 view and really say the pros and cons for doing, you know, whatever it is that they want to do. Absolutely. And um, in any business, there's politics. Um, there's a little good and bad. So I've got a little bit of everything. I've got some investment uh, knowledge. I, I, I do play around with the, the stock market. 
and um, I've been doing that since I was 21 after I had Dakota so um, and you know it's about being their mentor their their friend um, their air when they need it their their pickup you know and just encouraging them that they are the best and the athletes that I want are your your you know your Jeremy Lin your, your you know the, the the one that gets tossed all over the, the not so good one the diamond in the rough uh, it's okay to get the the five million you know first round draft athlete uh, it, it's okay those are easy um, I love a challenge I, I love I want to be able to represent the, the the female or male that they say ah, I don't really want them I don't really know what they got and I want to be the one to say you got it this it's right now it's happening right now and you're going to show them exactly who you are. So how do you feel about going up against, I mean, it's a predominantly male sport, um, it's a predominantly male industry, how do you feel about going up against, you know, these men and something that's very, very, there's a lot of competition in that business. Um, are you naturally, I mean, you ran track, but are you just naturally competitive within you, you just want, you know, that you're that lioness that just wants to be on top? Yes, I am a tiger. Um, and um, I love working alongside the men. Uh, to be quite honest with you, um, I've had agents call me from America to work with them, um, to bring their agency over here and me run their agency here. Wow. Uh, so I, I've got a lot of males who have called me to reach out and say, let's collaborate, let's work together. And so it, it, um, you know, I, I've heard from some Canadian agents who I currently collaborate with and uh, one U.S. agent um, and you know he says Lisa you're a female and we need you because you know we want to really tap into the Canadian market um, so there's a lot going on um, with with different agents different agencies uh, that have reached out to me and I've declined everyone um, and I, I said you guys have to give me some time a couple of months so, so that I can get my head wrapped around it because um, I don't really know if I want to work for an agency or I want to build my own because uh, I'm an entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. um, I always think, you're a boss. yeah, I think about long term um, longevity and me signing with an agency. What good is that going to do for me? Um, so I'm not afraid of building something, you know, and 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 taking my time. So you sure it, aren't afraid of building anything. I mean, look at all the stuff that you've accomplished from from your charities and, and, and all the programs that you've done. And, and then just your dedication and your passion and again going after your dream as far as going that unconventional route of getting your certification as an agent with both the WNBA and the NBA. I mean that is just phenomenal and the fact that you've got people waiting at your door and you are also protecting your brand and making sure that you are ready and it's not a procrastination thing I can tell the difference and I can tell that you are saying no I just got this I want to get my footing solid and right. this is you're also protecting your brand and what you bring forward to the players that you plan to represent so I think that is phenomenal thank you thank you very much um, yeah greatness is is achieved through stillness um, and I've got to be able to not have anybody um, get into my mind and let me think clear because um, you know Canadian athletes have so much to offer and I'm excited for the female and the males whether they sign with me or not it's not about the dollar at the end of the day it's about seeing our kids excel and excel the right way um, let me just give you a quick story um, this past summer um, as you know Skylar Diggins was drafted mm -hmm. at the WNBA and you know um, I, I sort of, you know, stood back and I said, I said to to, to my um, employees at Ability Center, I said to, to two in particular, Kalisha Keen and Takima Keen, I said to them, okay, guys, here's what here's what Jay Z is going to do. If he's a great agent, this is what he he's going to do. He's going to sign her, you know, have her play, of course, and then throughout the summer, a lot of agents will align themselves with agents in Europe, or they will um, become a FIBA regulated agent themselves, and and get their athlete the best team in Europe to play for through you know when it's off season well I said to them he's not going to do that uh, because he thinks long term and he's a smart businessman he's going to have Skylar go to every charity event he's going to have her sit on uh, any type of talk show he's going to have her do rounds at the hospital visiting kids so said so done and um, I'm really happy that he did that because it, it validated my thoughts of being an agent and what I want to do is I'm on the right track that's awesome. 
Yeah. That's awesome. Because I think sometimes, you know what, when you're in a field that you're you're new, you know that you have the skills, what it takes to get that validation. You you so need that when you're an entrepreneur and what you're doing. So um, I love that you are feeling it, that you're feeling like your instincts are, are right on point. And I think that that's going to definitely um, show through with, you know, your future endeavors with, you know, whoever you, you are um, – representing and I know that passion is one of the things you know at least you're doing what you're passionate about and that's something that not a lot of people get to do but Lisa how do you find the balance between being a mom um, of two kids you know who passion their passion is basketball and you want to be there present for them you have Canada here you have your other responsibilities and then now you're an agent how, what's this what's the secret sauce to the balance for you um not a lot of friends around. I don't do a lot of outings. Um, I manage my time um, wise, very wise. I, I do go to bed very late, one, two o'clock in the morning, and I'm up at about six a.m. and I'm at the office for seven. Um, but I give God thanks for the job that I have during the day. It allows me to, you know, at lunch I sit at my desk and I do some work, answer emails through Camda, um, and you know, callbacks, all of that stuff. So. Great time management. Um, I eat well. I, I run in the mornings um, at, at the center on the track, um, and and I I'm, I'm thankful, um, you know. And um, there's a sense of humility within me, so uh, I'm grateful for all my achievements, and I take nothing for granted. So um, you know, I keep going until I can't go anymore. It seems like you're very, you know, very focused, and you're very, you're very present in who you are and uh, where, what direction you want to go. Like you have a plan and you have a vision for your life. Um, I know there was talks of you writing a memoir. Um, have you started? And what's that? What's that been like for you? You know, in the in the thinking that this is something that you're going to do. Um, what's that that process like for you? It's fantastic. Um, yes, I've started. Uh, last year I started. And uh, I've written um, 29 chapters. And, oh, wow. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I have, um, you know, a few individuals interested in my book because uh, it's, it's written different. Um, it takes you on a day-to-day -day journey with Lisa Washington, a little bit of story. Um, it gets down to the heart of the matter when I was growing up, the people who I was around, um, the people who I hurt and who hurt me. And the book is really to enlighten in, – the young ones after me, and the young adults uh, who who are who have children at a young age and think, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not the end of the road because I did it, and there's nothing uh, more validating than reading something, not hearing it, but actually picking it up from time to time and having this book that I went through. I went through all of these things. Maybe you've gone through them but I've done it and here's how I did it and there were good things that I've done there's bad things that I did um, you know and there's re there's more good than bad but um, there was the hustle and I want to be able to share that uh, there was a great relationship that I had um, with my husband Gary um, who uh, my ex-husband I said husband um, but um, you know uh, he taught me so, some invaluable things and um, you know Dakota's father Donovan and just I want to be able to share um, you know because people a lot of people you know even at the office uh, during the day at Ability Center a lot of people say to me you know you have you know two kids for two different dads you're not married how do you do it I have members who who call me to have like mentoring you know one on one with me when they call or come to see me uh, for a member issue but uh, I'm happy to share my story, and when I started sharing it, I thought, you know what, I need to share it in, in paperback so that people can revert to it and go back and say, you know, later on, yeah, she said this, and, you know, mm -hmm. look at her now, you know, I, I'm a woman of my word. I'll never tell you I'm perfect, um, and I did hustle and struggle, and my, everybody who knows me, you know, I've always said, you got to suffer to prosper, because only then do you appreciate where you are really and truly uh, you hear our, our rap you know star Drake say it you know every word I, I, I listen to his words more than uh, you know I love rap but I listen to every I listen to every word that he says and it's it's the truth you know people aren't around you when you're going when you're down and they're not around you when you're I'm writing the application for the WNBA uh, certification and they're not encouraging you to, to keep going with Camda 
um, it's the people that you least expect um, have so much um, trust and faith and they're, they're championing you, championing you onwards. So, um, you know, it, it's, 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 it's an eye opener and I want to be able to share that. And there's a lot to share. We love that you share that because I know that um, Cher and I went to the Trent Shelton um, event that was here in, in Toronto, um, in Richmond Hill, right, Cher? Yeah. Richmond Hill. And um, we actually met a gentleman um, named uh, Aubrey, right? Yes. Aubrey. Yes. Uh, yes. Aubrey. And he was, you know, he was there and he was uh, giving out flyers for the event that you had with Rob Hill Sr. Um, and he was saying, oh, you, you know, you got to talk to my friend Lisa, you know, and like I think it was him, Cher, well, it was him, Cher, and I, and then Sasha, um, she's a, a, another person that's come on our show and she has a blog, Simon, Simon says. Um, but we were all just kind of talking about like people and like the synergy that was there and I mean your name came up and that's kind of how, you know, we, we got introduced to you um, and it's, that's the purpose of hacking into awesome is talking to people like you who are doing like the regular everyday people that aren't going to get the necessarily going to get the shine and it's just listening to what they do on a day-to-day -day basis hearing their nuggets their words of wisdom um, so we're so appreciative that you came on the show to to share this kind of of wealth of knowledge and to, mm -hmm. to see that you know it wasn't easy to know that there was a struggle to know that you know you persevere you have a vision and that anything really is possible like this is a testament to to you know doing what it takes to do what you want to do and to live your life with passion so um, I'm really happy that you came on the show and we got to meet you I know you're not very social but Sharon and I are very social as entrepreneurs <laughs> either so we get that <laughs> thank you so much for having me ladies um, you know, yeah, you guys do do know me. Um, you guys have definitely hacked in. I, I'm not too social, but I'm learning how to be just a tiny bit because I have to be. So thank you for having me. Thank you for asking me. I want to congratulate you both on such an amazing Google Hangout show. Uh, you've taught me about the Hangout Toolbox, the Hangout um, Lounge, and hanging out with you guys. So, um, you know, I, I, I wish your show much success. Um, thank you. I to be a part of it in the future. I will continue to watch you guys. I did go on and see some uh, past shows that you've done and um, I salute you guys because I'm all about starting something from scratch and not being afraid to do it and you guys are doing it and I, and I know that this is just going to grow because it's a it's it's Google, it's online and a lot of people are, are looking at TV and educating themselves online so I congratulate you both. Thank you so much. We really, we really do appreciate that. And and Lori and I kind of, um, we took, we've coined this term TV on our own terms, and that's kind of what this is. And um, again, Lori said it before. We are just about finding people who are doing awesome things and being able to share that awesome because there's so many nuggets that I know I walked away from uh, with talking to you today, you know, talking about your time management skills, talking about there's stories that I can identify with you. I had my son at 21 and I'm, we're about the same age so I completely get it and I understand your mission as far as more people need to hear that story to see what's possible instead of just looking what's in front of them, you know what I mean? So I really appreciate that. Thank and, you so much. Yeah. I wanted to ask you before, before we leave, um, your thoughts on, is there going to be a Canadian a WNBA team coming? You think that that's in the works, ever going to be a possibility? Good thing you asked that question. Um, mm -hmm. Hacking is hacking. Um, yes, the, you know, I'm working on that right now as we speak. Um, I had a conference call um, last week. And um, I'm very hush-hush on it because there are a few guys in the industry um, that I want to bring on board who has said from the very beginning, Lisa, if you do this, I want to be a part of it. And I stick, I stay true to my word. I said to them, you know, both. They're both males. Absolute, three of them, actually. I said, absolutely. So uh, I'm in the midst of it now. I have spoken to the WNBA. Like Magic Johnson, I'm looking for um, your, your millionaires and your billionaires. And um, so, you know, I've, I, you know, unfortunately, uh, Jim, Jim Flaherty is, has now passed, um, but I had brought it to, to him, and um, I just recently um, brought it to, to the uh, Rob Ford team. So, um, yeah, I got to say it. I got to say it. <laughs> hey, wherever the money's going to come from. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'll tell you, 
I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. Um, you know, I, I follow politics. I don't follow it to the T. But I'm a businesswoman, and uh, whoever's going to help me make that happen for the Canadians who live in Toronto, they're going to make it happen. So I've left it with them. The proposal was assistant, and I'm chiming away. So I'm hoping to bring the 13th WNBA team to Toronto. I want to start it, build it, and leave it. I don't want to stay in it. So um, yep, that's the way, serial entrepreneur. And Dan yes. Ford, if you're watching, if you're listening, come on. We want the WNBA right Let's here go. in Toronto. We've got the infrastructure. Let's happen. That's Let's make right. it happen. And um, I'm loving you. I don't know when you sleep, but that three <laughs> hours that you get every night, as long as you make it awesome, it's all good. Well, Thank Lisa, you. We one, 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 one more question, Cher. Okay. I want to know, okay. Lisa, who's your pick for... Uh, winning the playoffs. Um, uh, good question. Good question. I'm gonna go with um, LeBron when he gets. It's hot. Yes. Because, when, because LeBron has this thing when he gets into it, and he gets this face, you know he's about business. Mm -hmm. um, Miami Heat's gonna take it one more time, and then next year it's gonna be different. Okay. Yes. Next year. Right. Next year we'll talk about. But but Miami, LeBron, Dwayne, uh, they're gonna take it, and then maybe LeBron will be out. He'll probably go to another team. <laughs> Once again, you heard it here first. Exactly. You heard it here first. Well, Lisa, where can people find you? Because I mean, right now, I mean, you've told us so many amazing things. They're gonna want to know where they can connect with you, what they can do. So, where are you active on the net? Um, at Camda, C A M D A Sports on Twitter and on Instagram. I love Instagram. And um, they can find me at Lisa um, at CamdaSports.com through email. And I answer every email. It may take me 48 hours, but I answer every email. Awesome. Well, sure. This is it. Thank you. On the bag. I love it. I love this episode because I love it. It was just, I, I love the energy that was on this episode. So it's That's like, you know, right. we look back and we're like, oh my God, what was our favorite episode? I know this one's going to be there because I, I, I'm feeling Lisa. I'm feeling, I'm feeling Lisa not. too. So you guys, if you guys are on the net and you know someone awesome who should be on our show, make sure you visit us at laurieandshare.com slash guest and apply because we're always on the hunt for awesome. Right, Lori? Absolutely. I want to salute um, our friend on Twitter, Mr. Political Jones, at Political Jones, for, you know, tweeting us all throughout the show. Thanks so much for always supporting our show. So thanks so much. And also, Andrea from Italy, we got your questions. Thank you so much for being part of the show. All the way from Italy, all the way halfway around the world, we're in Canada. So, yeah, thanks for the shout out. Thanks for the love. And um, yet another episode in the bag, Lori. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. All right. So make sure you guys right. tune in next week. We're gonna be talking music next week. So um, yeah. yeah. Thanks so Good much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. So tune in next week. Bye. 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 Peace. Thank you.